Hello everyone, what is up and welcome back to the channel I Rumors. Today's video, after a long time, is gonna be a review. Today's video is gonna be my review of the 11 inch 2012 MacBook Air. So before we start off with the review, first thing that we always talk about is the backstory on this MacBook. The 2012 MacBooks, so of course, the used MacBook, and this I got it for fifty dollars. Yeah, it was a buggy, it was a steal, so I just got it for fifty dollars. Ninety percent fully working MacBook. I'll definitely come back to why I said ninety percent and not hundred percent. That you will definitely know in a while. But this MacBook is definitely a steal, and I've been using it for quite some time, for a few weeks right now, using it as my main content consumption device, and basically using it for a lot of the minor tasks and things like that. I didn't want to rush into the review, so I just took my time to use this device, and now finally here we are. So I'm ready for my review. So firstly, as usual, we're going to be doing the testings, and in the end, I'm going to be talking about my experience in using this MacBook. So without further ado, let's get started right into the review. Okay, so firstly, here is the MacBook. Of course, it's plugged in because the battery definitely on such an old model, it's not going to work. So let's slowly open it up. Here you can see that the screen is spoiled. Yep, uh, there's a lot of delamination on the screen and there's a lot of chips and there's this weird smell even coming out from the MacBook. I think you can even see there's these small liquid bubbles on the screen. So the screen, I would say, is pretty much gone. But other than that, almost every single thing about this MacBook is fully functional. This MacBook is fully functional and now once I increase the brightness, even the screen delamination is not that big of an issue except when you open white tabs like let's say let's just open this music. Once the music has loaded, that is when the delamination is pretty obvious, I would say. It's really obvious on white backgrounds but other than that, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe I thought it would be better if we do a screen recording instead of recording it on the front facing camera. I thought this would be a better quality. So firstly, let's take a look at the technical specifications of this MacBook. This MacBook, like I said before, is a 11 inch mid 2012 MacBook Air. In the RAM, it's a standard 4 GB of RAM, but in the future, if there's any problem, I'm going to be upgrading it, so I'm probably going to be maxing it up. But that's another story for another day. As for the graphics, the graphics is an Intel HD graphics, so pretty basic, just the usual ones. So that is it for the technical specifications. Now if we take a look at the apps, it's just the stock ones. Once the technical specifications and the initial take a look of the device is done, the next thing we're going to do is the Geekbench CPU and the Geekbench Compute benchmarks. So let's quickly run the benchmarks first. So firstly, I'm going to start on the CPU benchmark. So let's quickly run CPU benchmark. I really hope it doesn't crash or anything. So let's quickly wait for the results to be out. After close to two hours, the Geekbench is finally done. Yup, that's right. It took two hours for just the Geekbench to be completed. That's how slow this laptop is. So this MacBook scored 176 for single core and 233 for multi. Such low scores. I mean, I've definitely seen much lower. These are pretty low. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench compute. So this is the compute score and it's got a total of 296 for compute and this is I would say definitely the lowest I've ever seen for Geekbench compute and this is what took the longest close to an hour and this was about 30 minutes. So this is a Blackmagic disk speed test that I always use to check all the SSDs. So now it's running so let's wait for the results to be out. I'm actually very happy that the results came out much faster compared to the Geekbench which took about 2 hours but now the results are out. So write speed is about 132.2 megabytes while the read speed is about 274 megabytes. I was actually expecting much lower results due to how the Geekbench performed and how slow the whole computer was. Never be sure because this is actually a test and the real world it might be different but that's just a rough estimate. Now that we've taken a look and all the specific tests but now it's time for the real world testing so now let's quickly take a look at it and let's discuss further so here i've got our usual hdr video playing of course this definitely isn't 4k because the maximum that i can play on this laptop is 1080p take a look at it let me know how is it in the comments below i feel like when you're watching content the delamination on the screen isn't that obvious but is it obvious to you in cameras I'm pretty sure the circle spots are pretty obvious but is other parts obvious is it going to be a big disturbance to you that you have to let me know in the comments below 
So take a look at it. Take a look at it. Let me know how is it. For me, I feel like the blue spots and the delamination are pretty visible in some frames, whereas some frames they are not. But I would love to know your comments. So just definitely leave it in the comments below. It's a 11 year old laptop, so definitely the screen is not of the best quality. But I guess it's definitely okay to use it just to consume content. Of course, if you are someone who's going for too much of clarity, specific displays, then this definitely not. But other than that, this looks pretty mediocre. Uh, at least it's in a usable state. Here I've got an NCS ready to be played. So we're going to be playing it and let's test the speakers out. Of course, I'll definitely put the speakers at max volume. So let's take a look at it and see how the speaker quality is. So that is the speaker quality on the mid 2012 11 inch macbook take my testing with a pinch of salt because this is an enclosed area so the speakers will definitely be amplified so so if you're in an outdoor setting this speaker quality is not what you're gonna get the mic is pretty close to the speakers so but of course i try to keep it at like a proper distance but still it's a mic it's an enclosed area and the speakers are at full volume so all these are definitely going to be affected i mean amplifying the sound so definitely do take my testings with a pinch of salt and not really expect the results that i get here if you're going to be using an audio devices like the airpods or something else then the speakers don't really matter to you because that's what more of most of us use nowadays but other than that if you're going to be using just the speaker alone i would say it's it's not completely usable it's not completely unusable but definitely could be better. So hello everyone, I'm recording from front facing camera of this MacBook. We'll take a look at the video quality, take a look at the microphone quality, take a look at it. Let me know how is it in the comments below. So the, so the last thing that I want to talk about in this MacBook is the keyboard. As you all can see, this is not a local keyboard. I'm guessing this is probably a Japanese keyboard or a Korean keyboard. I'm not really sure. It does take some work to understand how this whole keyboard works because my muscle memory has been tuned to having the other keyboard. So this whole entire layout is just hard for me to memorize. And as you can see here, the caps lock is over here at the bottom. And let's just type something. Type a few words. And definitely the entire keyboard layout, like I said, is really kind of hard to figure out. But I think after a few times using it, definitely be able to figure it out. But overall, the keys just feel the same as every other macbook so that is about the keyboard I'm really not used to it so things are just kind of weird for me but of course definitely getting used to it over time so that is it we are coming to the end of the review so of course i'm definitely going to be talking about my experience in using this but before that if you're a regular viewer and if you're a subscriber you all know that i've missed out on one thing in this review and that is the battery life the battery on this macbook has been fully spoiled and by fully spoiled i mean it doesn't work without plugging the macbook in and once you plug it out the battery just goes flat just like in almost every single macbook that i buy this is the problem but of course we can't blame anyone in this because lithium-ion batteries tend to age and macbooks are all pretty old so we definitely can't be arguing with that so that is the reason why i didn't talk about battery life in this and overall the one thing that i would say about this macbook is it is definitely a machine which is fully functional and fully usable in 2024 like currently you can definitely use this macbook get your daily tasks done and there wouldn't be any issues except for just how slow the entire macbook is if you're someone who doesn't care about speed then this macbook is a fully functional one you can definitely use it and even if you have slight delaminations like mine i don't think that's going to be an issue but of course if you have a yellowing screen and stuff, stuff like that that is definitely another problem the task that this macbook struggled the most is definitely in geek batch because it took two hours and i'm not surprised that it took so long because it's really heavy task but, but other than that just normal everyday task it's a bit slow but it gets the job done and of course i did mention about the keyboard the keyboard uh, yeah like i said before still struggling to learn this entire new keyboard setup but i'm sure it's not really going to be worth it because not all the computers that i buy have this keyboard layout so i'm not really sure how i'm going to be doing this but probably just going to be just working my way through because this is definitely going to be one of my spare computers because i'm not going to be sure what i'm going to be using this macbook for but probably just some basic tasks just because i have it but that's about it but that being said before i use it I'm definitely going to be removing the battery 
So the MacBook is definitely going to be slowing down even more because usually once batteries are removed, MacBooks tend to get slower. So that's going to make the MacBook even more slow. So in the end, overall, my take on this is if you're having this computer, then you can definitely use it. Not an issue. Definitely can go for it. But if you're going to be buying this computer, I would say paying 40 to 50 dollars or maybe even 60 dollars it's worth it but paying more than 100 dollars to buy this computer it's not worth it unless it's in a pristine condition if you're going to be paying 90 to 100 bucks on this make sure it's in a pristine condition if it's in a pristine condition then the money might be worth it but other than that it's not worth it so with that we've come to the end of this video if you like what you saw don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to get subscribed turn on notifications because every single like is a motivation to me to make better content for all of you to watch and of course these videos are not easy especially with these old computers they definitely sometimes tend to get slow sometimes they tend to hang up they tend to just shut down while the middle of the videos so your like and your subscribe will really make me feel like the, the struggles with these old computers are really worth it so a small one minute of your time and a small subscribe from you really means a lot and it would really go a long way for me so just consider doing that so with that thank you so much for watching and i'll catch all of you in the next one bye bye